Hi from me, Romy Stoch, and welcome to Derech Eretz, The Way of the World. In today's show, Chief Rabbi Goldstein discusses the importance of educating our children. We spend the day with Africa Tikkun and visit the Phyllis Joel School in Cape Town. Commonwealth Chief Rabbi Ephraim Merva says that education is the world's great equalizer, providing opportunities where there might otherwise be none, and creating knowledge and understanding where ignorance would otherwise reign. It provides a platform from which people of all ages are able to fulfill their potential, and we have a responsibility not only to maximize our own opportunities for learning, but also to help others do the same. South Africa's Chief Rabbi Warren Goldstein elaborates further. Who is it that really makes history? What are the most profound and important things that a person can do in this world to change the course of human destiny? And there's somebody that the Talmud identifies who lived more than 2,000 years ago who actually made history and changed the world. And what did he do and what was his name? Probably haven't heard of him. His name was Yoshua ben Gamla. But you know what he did? He established the very first, certainly for the Jewish people, but I think it's possible in the world, the very first comprehensive nationwide schooling system. And he set it up across the length and breadth of Israel and he instituted that there wouldn't be a city or town or community that would not have its own school where children could be educated and that they would begin their education at a young age and be able to learn what it is to live in this world and to learn the skills of literacy, to learn the skills of being able to function in this world and also very importantly to learn about values, the values of what it means to be a great human being or as we say in, in this Jewish expression, a mensch. A mensch, it's a, it's a Yiddish word and it means to be a person of values and morals and principles. For a society to succeed we need to be educating the youth because the value of education has been at the heart and soul of the Jewish people for all of these centuries and we're an ancient people that has deep roots in history and what has sustained us it has been this commitment to education but not only the education of particular skills but education in values. At the heart of what Jewish education is all about is the importance of values that we learn and to teach our children how to behave in this world, how to be good people, people of faith, people of compassion, people of decency, people of dignity, who treat all of those around them with respect and who have a connection to God and who can go out and make a productive contribution to society. That is the essence, an education of values. And that is what we need in South Africa today. Not only about the technicalities and education of the technicalities of maths and science. And of course that's important because people have to go out and to be able to earn a living and to, and to be able to support themselves and have the skills necessary to survive in society. But it's, it's one step further than that and if we are to raise a generation of young South Africans who are compassionate and decent people who care and want to make a positive contribution to society then we need to educate them not only about the how of life but the why we need to educate them not only in technical skills but in values but we can't lose the element of the home when a school educates a child it does so as a proxy on behalf of the parents the parents cannot abrogate responsibility we need to take that responsibility and so in our homes we need to ask and be interested in the education of our children in the technical education in their homework and what they're learning and what's going on at school but we also need to inculcate the right values to our children to hand on the heritage of what those values are and what it means to be a good person. That is so crucial and that's such an important part of the relationship between parents and children that our homes need to become beacons of moral light because that is where the transfer happens. That's why in the Ten Commandments, one of the Ten Commandments is honor your parents. Why? Because Rabbi Samson Raphael Hirsch explains that when you honor your parents, that is going to be the lifeline of the transmission of the tradition and of the values from one generation to the next. There has to be respect of children to their parents and when there is that respect and likewise from 
parents to children and when in an atmosphere of mutual respect then values can be transferred from one generation to the next and that is what education is about it's about creating a world-class schooling system but it's also about educating in the home and handing those values from one generation to the next so together we can build a great society On the second Tuesday of every other month, the late Bertie Lubner and Nelson Mandela would meet to discuss life, religion, politics, and most importantly, social responsibility and social investment. It was during these important discussions that the seed of Africa Tikkun was planted with the aim of eradicating poverty by empowering children and youth to develop into valuable, contributing members of South African society. My dad, Bertie um, Lubner, was an amazing human being. He was one of these individuals who started his life, like many individuals, determined to make money for his family. He was part of a family business. So he was the type of individual who was very connected with uh, life, with people in life. Over the years, he gravitated more away from the principles of making money to the principles of sharing what money could do. And I think that was a critical stage in his life where instead of running business out of one pocket and charity out of another, he started to recognize that the two necessarily needed to be integrated. So I think what made Bertie, my dad, just such a remarkable human being, was that he understood the essence of human beings, irrespective of race, color, or creed. He had a sentiment that there was good in everybody, and that if you could uncover that good, there would be a pay it forward situation. So he spent his life, his life energy, uh, sharing his time with his family, with others. Um, other individuals, relative strangers, were made to feel that they were part and parcel of a bigger context of family. And so we got raised with the philosophy that whilst our core family was sacrosanct, our family concept was extended to include all sorts of other individuals across the globe, in fact. And so I think what made my dad great was the fact that he never saw himself as being this uh, phenomenal leader, uh, this force for change. He saw himself really as an integrator uh, and as somebody who put his arms around literally thousands of people across the globe. I think that the start of my Africa Tikkun came from, uh, and if I may, I said this with respect, a knee-jerk reaction. I think my father was shocked and appalled when um, apartheid collapsed and he had true insight to what was going on in the townships. I think whether it was ignorance or lack of media coverage, um, uh, many people did not necessarily understand what was going on in the townships of South Africa. So he started just reaching out. He started looking after um, elderly people whose shacks needed renovation in Alex. He started looking after children in Orange Farm who were destitute because their parents had lost jobs as a result of the collapse of the agricultural farms in, in the Orange Farm area. So he and the chief rabbi, who had a very special closeness with, chief rabbi had this concept of the Jews' obligation to the non-Jews, the work that we necessarily had to do as a community. And the, the initiative was really trying to pull together the various Jewish initiatives that were taking place across the country under an umbrella called Ma Africa Tikkun. The problem was that most Jewish initiatives necessarily are driven by Jews who all want to be captains and nobody really wants to be the seaman. Um, so it was very difficult, it was in fact impossible to pull all these Jewish initiatives under one umbrella. And so uh, Ma Africa Tikkun developed a life of its own. Africa Tikkun is an organization that develops children from cradle to career. And with this, we have different sections within the organization that caters for the needs of children according to their age groups. We have the early childhood development that works with children from the ages of two to six. And we have the CYD program, the Child and Youth Development Program, where we work with children from grade one to grade 12. We also have the skills development program that caters for children, out, uh, young people out of school who cannot further their education. 
and do not really have work to do. So we prepare them for the workplace. Um, we also have the empowerment program because we realize that children comes from children come from families, and within the families there are problems in the society. There are problems. So when we deal with the children, we don't deal with them in isolation. We have support programs that actually support the home, the family as a whole, to make sure that the children grow well in a well-rounded um, environment at home and at the centre. So the Cradle to Career concept was designed over about a four or five year period um, and I think it saw a um, refocus of the strategy of Africa Tikkun. And yes, it was very much in line with I think what the growing needs in the country are uh, becoming more apparent. Youth unemployment and our contention also is the issue of unproductive youth finding employment. So we've got to get productive youth into the right jobs. Two very important lessons I learned from my dad. The first was, if you want to get the job done, get it done. So his motives were always driven towards end objectives, <clears throat> and his energy was driven towards achieving stuff. So rather than procrastinating, getting the job done. The second, I think, very important element was, I think, his humility. He had a sense that Every human being was effectively the same. We were all turned on by the same things, we all needed the same warmth and comfort and security, irrespective of our station in life. So whether you were a president and he showed due deference to presidents or rabbis for argument's sake, he showed due respect for them, but they were human beings, very much the same as individuals on street corners. And very often he'd stop his car on the side of the road and give the same discourse, the same time to the guy who was stuck on a wheelchair at the side of the road, as he would, for argument's sake, to senior members of large corporates. <clears throat> so I learnt that human beings are human beings, and it is the good in human beings that determines their true station in life, not their title. Working within this organisation, what I've personally gained is the fact that I'm able to share my own life with others and able to learn from others through their life story. And just being able to open up to a child, listen, listen to a child without being judgmental to that child and getting the child look for the path that they, they want to look for. It they want in life. That is always very rewarding because most of the young people, the young women in particular that we work with, they don't have the relationship with their parents to communicate and have relevant information. They have all sorts of information but not the relevant information. They get different messages from their peers but when they sit with you and actually talk to you and realize that you are not judgmental they open up to you and in that process I also grow because I learn from them every day. I came from a business background. I was raised in the family business and very driven by um, monetary goals frankly speaking. Uh, the PG Group was in relatively early stage of development uh, when I first joined and spent 10, 11 years of my life with that group. So I was raised by my grandfather as much as by my dad in principles of business. But there was always a principle of the importance of people. My grandfather from, used to pick me up and take me in his Valiant to go and visit customers. And we wouldn't necessarily look at the financial accounts of the customer, we would look at the personal details of the customer before we got there. How many children he had, what are their names were. So I learned very early on the importance of people and the ability to be able to change other human beings' lives is more than just a casual nice to do. It's a huge responsibility, but it is the most gratifying thing I think that any one human being can be given the gift of being able to do. And in reflection, when I think of my dad, um, I can only you know, express an enormous gratitude to him uh, for the legacy that he's left in enabling me to be able to do this kind of work, which is the greatest gift I think any one parent can give to a child.
Phyllis Joel School uses innovative techniques and systems to create learning that is tailor-made for each student. The overarching goal is to synthesize the development of mind, body and soul, thus educating children to apply the fundamental and timeless laws, lessons and values of the Torah or Bible to their lives in a modern and dynamic way. My vision of a school was a very integrated school, both in terms of the pupils that came and in terms of the curriculum. We're so blessed here in Cape Town that we've got a small yet quite united community. And here at Phyllis Joel, we've got religious kids, kids that aren't religious, as well as the entire spectrum of religious kids, where we very much respect and teach about each other's customs. And we want to give every single child in our community um, a place where they feel safe, um, regarded as a good Jew, regarded as a, um, an important person in our community, while still teaching them to be Jewishly literate, um, a depth of our values, a depth of our rituals, etc., so that they can, at the end of the day, I want a child to be able to leave the school, being able to either become the greatest rabbi or a rocket scientist, and that they can truly choose which path they want to go and hopefully do a bit of both. We have a dual academic curriculum, both a Jewish studies curriculum and the regular um, South African CAPS curriculum. But where I think we are unique in the school is that we try and integrate it very much. And our Jewish studies curriculum very much supports um, the aims and goals of our, um, our general studies curriculum. In addition to that, we really want Judaism to be not a subject, but really an, a very integrated and very natural part of their lifestyle. And so we, um, when we teach Jewish studies, it's so much about life skills, about life examples, and also developing a sense of trust and faith in the world and in God um, to get them through the humps and bumps in life. Do you agree with Shana? Yes. So what did she write? Yes. Two plus eight equals? 10 or 8 plus 2 equals and it's definitely a holistic environment. I think they look at, at the learner as a whole, not just academically, but in other areas as well, like through creative arts, through sports, through music, through movement. Really concentrating and learning what how the child learns and not just moving in a, in a mainstream style of education. It's actually building around the child and, and looking at their strengths and how they learn to make it a little bit more of a more fun experience for them. What was the thing that um, he didn't delay to do? What was the thing he didn't delay? He said the man, the boy didn't delay because he really wanted the Ark of daughter. He left, he went to give everyone a fresh Milah. Right, he went to give everyone, to give everyone the message that they had to have this Brit Milah in order for the families to marry each other. We endeavour to get the best and newest programmes. For example, we've, in the last few years, we've integrated a Singapore maths programme in our curriculum. And um, we send out our teachers on as many staff development um, opportunities as we can in order for them to um, have access to the latest research. I love this school. When I came at Phyllis Joel, I was first, I first didn't have any experience. I was just an assistant teacher in the preschool. So later on, I was promoted as a primary school assistant teacher. That's when I learned a lot. So in teaching library lessons, in assisting in each and every class, I gain a lot of experience from different teachers. And I'm studying as well to be a teacher. So this position has given me lots of opportunity to grow individually as a person and in the career that I'm I'm building onto. Today, children are much more complex than, than maybe they used to be, or at least we're recognizing their complexity. So the development of identity is very important, both their Jewish identity and their personal identity, giving them a sense of confidence, giving them the ability to learn in the way that they learn and in a conventional way. Um, research has shown that not only in a particular way, but in a diverse way. We give children support, whether it's 
psychological or, or remedial support. And we also try and give them an opportunity to participate in all different um, parts of life. I think regardless of the size of a school, social work services is vital. Um, no community, no family is immune from challenges along the way. You know, my role is really about supporting any child that might present with emotional behavioural problem. As we know, looking at various different school settings across the board, no matter what size community, there are going to be children with learning difficulties. And as we know that often sometimes learning difficulties and learning challenges impact on your emotional well-being and vice versa. So having another head to think about things and, and supporting teachers, parents, the children themselves to manage some of the challenges often, you know, provides extra support and help. Ring a ring a rosy, a pocket full of posies. Hush, hush, we all fall down. We've got a, a strict midot program. Midot means. Um, developing positive character traits, which are constantly evaluated, recognized um, at, our, at our primary school prize giving at the end of the year. Um, our Mensch Award is the most sought after and highest value award. Although we do also recognize sport, academic, music ab ability um, as well, just to give all children with all different um, abilities and strengths um, a chance to shine. I've been teaching for over 12 years. Um, at international schools all over the world. I like that it's very small and it's very child-centered. The staff are amazing. Everybody's got a very positive attitude and the environment that the children are in is amazing. So the school has happy children. They're happy outside in the classroom and the staff are happy, so it just makes one big happy family. Natalie is a great principal I'm so lucky to have, uh, to have known her in my life. She is the one who recognized the potential that I had before I came as a nobody with no experience. And the relationship that she has with not only me, all the staff, it goes beyond just the work relationship. She would like to know your personal life. When it's difficult, we go to her. When even in our personal lives, when you've got a problem, she's easily approachable. So she is a great person. Our school motto is Torah Derech Eret, Torah with proper conduct. And we chose this motto because we really believe that being religious, following the Torah, following God's word is absolutely critical. But if it comes with a sense of arrogance, with a sense of um, judgmentalism, um, it, it, it just isn't what it could be, and it isn't, it, it's not holistic. And here at Phyllis Joel, we want to bring up children who have magnificent manners, who really see God, God's word and God's world, um, and all his creations in, in an equal light, and that we can really just have incredible respect for everyone, to have Derech Eretz. Albert Einstein wrote, It is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy in creative expression and knowledge. If you have missed any of our past episodes of Derek Eretz, you will be able to watch them on our Derek Eretz Connect YouTube channel. From me, Romy Stach, and the Derek Eretz team, remember, education is vital to success and to being a productive, positive member of society.